Alright, pushing forward with our crafting system. First thing we need to do is go into the player blueprint because we need to set up a new function. So over on the function list I'm going to add one called craft item. Sorry for the cut. Heard somebody walking outside it sounded like. Anyway, back to our craft item function. It's going to take an input that will be the item info that we're trying to craft, which will be an item info struct. So, first thing we can do in here is just go ahead and promote this to a local variable called craft ing. It's not registering, is it? No. I'm going to call it crafting item. All right, so now in our crafting icon button, we need to add an on clicked event. So when the button is clicked, we want to cast to the player blueprint. Get the player character, and then call that craft item function that we just made. We're going to feed our item info into it. Could not find the fun. Oh, if you get this kind of error ever, it just means I forgot to compile this one. All right, so now back in the player br blueprint. So once we set the item info coming in to a crafting item, this will just make it easier to get later on in the graph. Once it gets a little bigger, we're going to break this item info open. We're also going to go up and grab our inventory. And we need to do a for each loop on this. Well, but we'll move this over a little bit first because we also need to get our keys and values from our recipe. So I'm going to move this up and in place. And move this up and in place. And then if you highlight this, you can click this hide unconnected pins and it just kind of cleans everything up. So I'll just do this. It's because I'm OCD a little bit. Now from the values, I'm going to hook up to that for each loop. And what I want to do is I want to break my item info open in each slot and see if it's equal to any of the ones in here. So from the keys, I'm going to do a for each loop also. I'm going to hook my loop body to the execute on this one. And I want to see if the item class equals any of the items in here. And if it does, I want to see if the value at that point is less or if how many we have of that item is greater than or equal to the value at that point. So I'm going to get a copy of the item at that index. And I want to see if my current stack is greater than or equal to that amount. So if both of these are true, so if the item class is matched, which we can go ahead and click this hide unconnected pins, clean it up nicely. So if the item classes match and the current stack is greater than the value associated with the same index that the item was found at, which remember the value is how many we need, the stack is how many we have. So if the current stack is greater than and this, then we want to do an and boolean with a branch right here off of our loop body. Plug that in right there. Try to figure out a way for this to not drive me crazy. 
not going to work. I'll deal with it. Uh, and then we'll move on. So we want to add another local variable. And this will be craft r e q craft requirements met. Just a shorthand for it. And it will be an integer. So I'm going to get that. And I want to increment it. Now this will be how many of the items in the recipe actually measured out right. So right here at the very beginning we also want to go ahead and set this back to zero so that every time we call this it will reset back to zero. So each time we're checking to see if the item in the key matches our inventory and the value matches then we increment this and then once it's completed on the main loop way over here not this one but you want to check all your items and all the keys and everything then we want to do a branch and the, what we want to check is to see if the crafting requirements is equal to the length of our keys And if true, then we want to go ahead and pick up item. Because that means we had enough of all the items to be able to craft it. So we're just going to test this out real quick before we get into the, the rest of it. So if I come in here and I try to craft potions, I got none. Now if I pick up, how many did I say? Alright, if I pick up the stuff to make a mana potion, see I've got enough to make a mana potion, because I set that to two green herbs and one health potion, so if I do that, then I just crafted me a mana potion, just like that. So what we can do, just to double check, is we can add a print string called item crafted exclamation point so let's where's my, oh let's try it one more time and I'll just add a couple more of these because I needed five of the green herb so I got five green herb so if I try to craft it item crafted there it is in my bag all right so now the next part would be removing the item so if it's completed and we've crafted the item, we can get rid of this now. Then we kind of need we need to do partially the same thing over here. So let's grab our crafting item, break it open, because we need our recipe. Oh, we need the keys again and the values again. So we'll take our inventory and the for loop right here, control C, move it on down, control V to paste it. Now just like we did up top, we're going to do another for each loop in here, which we can just go ahead and copy this ones, I suppose. Crap. Okay. <laughs> Break open the item info. Loop body to loop body. Move this on down. See if the classes match. Then we want to get copy of the value at that array 
subtract one from it because we are going to be using a for loop for loop not a for each but a for loop branch hook that up so we want to find the items that match and then we'll just punch in remove item so if the item matches the recipe then we remove it this many times basically so we'll just do this right here Hook that just like that. Item info way over here. Now it's gotten late. I've gotten tired. I'm probably not explaining it very well. But what we're doing is first we're checking our inventory to seeing if the actors and values match our inventory's class and to see if our current stack of that item is greater than the need. If so, then we're filtering it through this craft requirements met because if we have three items needed, then we need to make sure that they're all greater than the other. So then once we do, we're seeing did the craft requirements meet the length of the thing because the length, remember, starts from 1, 2, 3. So will this. Well, it won't start. It'll be at 0. But if it's at 0, then it's, yeah. So if it is, then we're picking up that item. We're measuring the recipe against our inventory again and then finding each element in our inventory that matches and removing it x amount of times, the x being how many of it we needed. So then we're just filtering it through our remove item on a for loop to repeat the process because we set our for loop up to repeat to remove only one at a time. So now if I jump in here and I craft a well just to show you I have five green herb. So if I craft a health potion now I just have the one health potion. No green herbs. Which I actually need to show y'all the next part. So I'm just going to set three. Alright, so if I pick up all the green herbs and one health potion. So I have eight green herbs, one health potion. I craft that. Now I have two health potions, three green herbs. And if I craft the mana potion, oh wait. Oh wait, yeah, we haven't set up the no, fire need. So I lost one health potion and one green herb, but now I have a mana potion. So yeah, there's our crafting system so far. Let's check the time on this video. 12 minutes. Alright, let's set up the need for fire. Alright, so in the player blueprint, all I'm going to do is I'm going to add a boolean called near flame question mark. That I'm going to toggle back and forth just with a, a key press for right now, which will be my four key. So I'm pressed, I'm just going to flip flop back and forth to set this either A to true or B to false. Now in our craft item, there is one more thing we need to do way up here at the beginning. Oh. So we need to check this fire needed one more time. Back it up. So is the fire needed? If true, check to see if the player is near a flame. If true, then we feed it on through. If it doesn't need a fire, then we can just feed on through and not worry about it. Alright, so it should default to false on that. Yeah. Alright, so let me jump in. Mm, let me add one more print string just to show you. Just to illustrate it a little nicer. Need fire all right so if I jump in and I pick up all this stuff real quick so I've got all that and if I try to craft a mana potion I need fire so I can't 
But if I hit the F key, not the F key, what is it? The 4, 4 key. And then I try to craft it. Now I've got it. And if I hit the 4 key again and try to do it, I don't have I don't have the the stuff, but it should still be Oh, it's because I shift F1. Okay. Now let me craft that real quick. And then boom, just like that, we got our crafting system. So, all right. I will see y'all in the next one to for one of those skippable videos if you don't want to see, but I'm just going to be expanding on my own data table just to show you a bunch of different stuff. So, all right. I will see y'all in the next one. Bye-bye.